Hey, how you doing guys? Uh, before we get into the installation and using the calibration software, I kind of want to explain a few things uh, that I feel are important and even may affect your purchase. But um, if you just want to see the installation and calibration of Display Cal, you can just go ahead and jump ahead. So I'll try to keep it as short as possible. Now, of course, uh, our recent purchase of the Spider 5 Express uh, hardware calibrator for monitors. Now they actually got three different uh, models for the Spider 5. They have the Express, which is the cheapest, the Elite, and the Pro. Now the Pro obviously being for professional videographers, photographers, and so on. Um, now the only difference is the software. It uses exactly the same hardware cal uh, colorometer. So I didn't feel really that... Um, you know, paying for uh, almost $200 more was really worth it. But I did know about a uh, free open uh, openware software called um, DisplayCal, uh, available for all three uh, major operating systems, Windows, Mac, and Linux. And uh, I did some quite a bit of testing on this using two different computers. So we actually tested it on a... Um, uh, 2015 Mac Pro uh, using an LG ultra wide monitor and also on a 2009 Mac Pro using an Apple cinema display 24 inch now surprisingly the Apple uh, cinema display is fairly accurate so um, not much was needed in, as far as calibration now the LG ultra wide monitor was kind of different it was really designed for gaming but consider it had such a wild real, real estate uh, screen size uh, and the price was good. I went ahead and purchased that. And so uh, if you calibrate it correctly, it, it should work fine. I did have issues within the editing software and the output was much different from in the editing software. So I, I decided to go ahead and purchase this. And uh, keep in mind uh, this... Uh, uh, video is primarily for the Mac installation um, so how it works on Linux and Windows is going to be different Windows is probably going to be pretty much all automated and in some cases the Mac version is as well um, but it can be the installation can be quite tricky and there's actually two ways to do that as well you can just go for the standalone display cal uh, and then it will automatically download your software or if you want to uh, have it automatically update with new versions you can go for it's called the zero install uh, method and then that's a little bit different as well so we're going to go ahead and uh, differentiate that so I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, maybe uh, you you might be interested in purchasing this as well and using the uh, display cal software Okay, we're going to be installing um, Display Cal on a Mac. Uh, there is no native installer, so what I simply do is open up the image file, and then uh, usually I go to um, your uh, your file explorer, and then you go to your application folder. And what I usually do is just simply uh, make a new folder. Uh, which I'm going to name uh, Display Cal so to make it easier to find. And then simply uh, drag and drop all your files inside the folder. And this is kind of typical of a lot of the um, Mac software. Some doesn't have installation procedures. You simply drag it into your application folder. And uh, probably I should have edited that part out right there. But okay, and then we're going to do clean it up, uh, arrange all the uh, files uh, by name, just like so. And then we're going to go into the rest of the installation procedure. We're going to try to uh, close out this image file, uh, which is probably a little slow. It doesn't want to close out for us.
Okay, just to show you, uh, when you open up your application folder, then uh, you can access it from there like most of your applications. A uh, lot much easier way of doing it. And then we're going to go ahead and open up the Display Cal application. And here it says, since we used a zero install, uh, we're going to download and install it automatically, which uh, takes a couple of minutes. Uh, most of installing of the software and configuration is done automatically with the exception of uh, dragging some of the files into your application folder and uh, it's taking a couple of minutes because it's actually downloading uh, everything from the internet and here's the uh, installation application for zero install now you can use zero install if you want to automatically update it all your software that includes the interface the GUI and support files that you're going to need to run display cal and as you can see it's downloading everything we need and uh, just in case we're going to actually uh, run it again just to make sure um, everything's working correctly and then if you want to update it you would simply uh, refresh all new and then it would uh, install all the new updates uh, if they have a new display cal come out and then also all the support software as well and we're just simply running it again to make sure uh, everything is Uh, has all the newest software available okay after that we're gonna go ahead and close that out and let me see there we go we got display cal this is version uh, 335 by the way and then here you use the uh, RG uh, CMS, ooh, ICMS, which is actually the color engine that is used by Display Cal. And uh, here we're just simply going to choose the automatically download, or you can go to the website to, to uh, download it and then install it yourself manually. And uh, that'll a couple take a couple of minutes uh, to do so. And normally if you don't use a zero install, you can um, use a standalone display cal or just simply uh, download the uh, color engine from there and then the rest of the installation procedure would be uh, much shorter. And uh, we get to this screen right here and if you're using the spider file, which we are, you um, actually download um, the software and drivers for that and uh, that way you actually get advanced features and um, which actually we really want so um, we're going to download both of those and install those as well uh, keep in mind if uh, you are uh, using display cal and you you installed the spider 5 software you'll have to remove the spider 5 software to use display cal um, now on this one um, usually I like to auto detect it says it's better to do so and this is uh, user information submitted to other users and none's coming up for the Apple cinema display so um, usually you'll get several options um, so we're going to probably have to use the default settings for the Apple cinema display um, so we'll set it on auto, which is none. We're going to use the default gamma of 2.2, which is standard. We're going to choose uh, LCD white LEDs, which most newer new monitors use anyway. And then we'll simply go to the other installation procedure to the uh, actual calibration. Okay, the, uh, this part right here is 
kind of automated, uh, interactive, um, and that's for displays that you can control the uh, blue, green, and red, and then it um, it will make for a better calibration. Unfortunately, with the Apple Cinema Display, it doesn't have that feature. You can really only control the brightness, so we're going to uncheck that, and then we're going to set uh, the calibration speed to the very lowest as far as making it high speed because it uh, you can, this actually can run for several hours. So this one takes about 14 minutes, but in all actuality it's more like 20 to 30 minutes, which is not bad. Then you simply put the um, calibration square where you want it on your monitor and set your monitor in front and then simply go to the calibration procedure. And then we're going to simply move that away and uh, we're going to go ahead and come back once everything is all finished and look at the calibration profile and installation. Okay, calibration is already finished and it, uh, it shows some calibration information which you can also look at and I'll show you that uh, here in just a second. Um, now this uh, makes an ICC profile that you put into preferences or you can uh, also make LUTs as well but usually those are for standalone applications and ICC profiles are better for global system-wide use and uh, we're simply going to install for the current user only and then uh, there we go it's in installed and we'll actually go to the preferences of the display to show you how you can switch back and forth normally you would only use the uh, ICC profile once you calibration for uh, if you are video editing or photo edi editing then you want to simply um, choose the calibrated ICC profile and we're going to switch between the two just to show you the difference like I said there wasn't much because the Apple Cinema display is actually quite accurate um, there was a little difference but you still should use the calibrated uh, profile anytime you're doing editing and uh, there we go